When you think of a cowboy boot brand, there's a good chance Tony Lama is one of the first brands that comes to mind. Because they're one of the most popular brands out there, they're in every single country store, everyone that gets into cowboy boots at least owns one pair of Tony Lama in their life. And we're gonna cut this one in half and do some tests on it to really see if Tony Lama lives up to the brand recognition and the hype and the price point, or if it's fallen victim to the same thing that a lot of these big, big brands do where they just rely on their their name to sell a subpar product so let's cut it in half and run some tests and thanks to tactile turn for sponsoring this video they make some really nice heavy duty pens that are handmade in texas and they use a bunch of unique materials like copper that ages really beautifully we'll put a shot in the background of how much they age they also do bronze and their most popular metal is titanium because this, it's such a weird pen because it's so light, but it still has that super thick sidewall. It still has that unique like uh, texture on the outside. And they're refillable with all the popular pen refills, which is nice because some people like different uh, flows on pens, different thicknesses. So you can really make your pen exactly how you want. And maybe the most important feature that isn't really that important of a feature is this click right here. I sit here and click this all day, every day. I'll, I'll steal everyone's pins and I'll just be on the couch and we'll be in the meetings and I'll just be clicking it all day. And everyone's too nice to tell me to stop. Like I, I catch myself annoying myself with how fun it is to play with. And the really nice thing about these is they come with a lifetime warranty because they're such a heavy duty, thick walled pin, you're gonna have a hard time breaking these pins. So if you're sick of using the pins that you stole from the mechanic shop down the road, check out Tactile Turn via link in my description and use the code ROSEANVIL to save 10% which is a pretty big discount for a handmade product that's made in the United States and a titanium pin is pretty cool. I think uh, we didn't have we didn't have this titanium one when we first did the first ad and this one it feels so crazy how light it is. So check them out below. Thanks again to Tactile Turn. And this is the start of the cowboy boot series. So we wanted to start with Tony Lama because it was so popular and to give us kind of a baseline for a mid-tier boot that's widely distrib distributed and uh, we're gonna do a bunch of different boots and different price ranges to really get a full scope of the entire market. So if you like this video, be sure to support it because it's the only way that we can afford really to, to do the following cowboy boot series, especially when we get to these thousand dollar cowboy boots. And we also have a Whites collab coming up that I that perfectly timed with this cowboy boot. It's not a cowboy boot, but it, it's similar. And I'm really excited for it. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So now, all that that's done, let's get through the history of, this, of Tony Lama, because Tony Lama actually has a pretty interesting history. Because Tony Lama himself was a child of Italian immigrants, born in 1887, 1898 he was orphaned, and his uncle took him in, and apprenticed as a shoemaker in Syracuse, New York. And then 1903, he joined the U.S. Cavalry at the age of 16. And then from 1903 to 1911, he was stationed in Fort Bliss, Texas, as a cobbling shoemaker for the troops and fixing up all their boots and shoes. And his reputation for improving boots and repairing them started to spread across the Southwest. And then by the end of his time in the Cavalry in 1911, he settled in El Paso. Out in the West Texas town of El Paso and started his boot making and shoe repair business. And then from 1911 to 1917, he took that small little operation and eventually grew it to the size of where he's making 40 pairs a day. By the 60s and 70s, he Tony Lama was an industry leader in boot making. And then unfortunately, 1974, Tony Lama, the man, the myth, the legend, died and left the business to his son, Tony Lama Jr. And then in the 80s, there's another resurgence in the cowboy boot popularity with the urban cowboy boom uh, helped by the, all the cowboy movies of the time and Tony Lama expanded to the point where they were moved into an 80,000 square foot factory and then finally in 1990 Justin Boots bought the Tony Lama brand and name and rolled it into their cowboy boot empire and now still in 2022 Tony Lama is still owned by Justin Boots so kind of an interesting history all the way from uh, an immigrant orphan child to being one of the most recognizable name brand boots in the entire world. It's really, I, I really like that story just because of the humble beginnings of Mr. Tony Lama. I thought it was worth taking a minute just to kind of go through the history of it. So now let's get into the quality of it. Now that Tony Lama is owned by Justin, how the, has the quality dropped? What is the quality of the boots? So starting with the leather, so the entire upper is made from a cowhide leather. It's probably a chrome tan leather. And even though this bottom vamp area looks like it's like a buffalo or bison hide, I'm pretty sure it just has that print embossed into it with a little bit of a stain on top to give it some contouring and a little bit of contrast. And the thickness of the leather is surprisingly thin. And you know, maybe that's how it is with cowboy boots. We don't really know because it's the first one we cut apart, but the bottom is about 1.8 millimeters thick, which is like slightly thicker than most like sneaker leather, but not quite as thick as what you see in most higher quality boots. The shaft leather, this blue leather is 
one millimeter thick, so even thinner, but it is backed by another like one millimeter thick leather. And as for the quality of leather, when we put it on the Roseanville standardized grading leather system, if we look at the cross section, you can see that there's a grain pattern in there. And if we look really, really closely at the top portion, you can see that there is some natural characteristics in it. But to really tell, we gotta put it to the flame to see if that top coat melts away, like cheap Nike leather, or if it's just a pigment on top. So we put the flame to the lower part of the leather first, and as you can see, it just kind of burns away. And it doesn't start melting, it doesn't start bubbling. So to me, that that this bottom portion is a B grade leather because it's just a heavy pigment on top instead of a really heavy plastic coating. And as for the shaft leather, this, this would also be a B grade leather because it still has a lot of that natural texture in the leather, but it does have that really heavy pigment on top like you can see from burning the leather, but it doesn't have plastic on top. So it's not a C grade leather, I would consider it a B grade leather. So really not bad leather, all things considered, especially for a $250 boot. Wish it was a little bit thicker, but it is lined. And because it's a cowboy boot, we wanted to see how puncture resistant the boot is because it's a cowboy boot. You might be off on the, the range, a rattlesnake comes up, bites you on the shaft of your boot. You wanna know if you're protected. So first we did a, a quick puncture test where we cut the swatches out, we mount a nail in the drill press and press down, or not a drill press, the arbor press, press down, see how many pounds it takes to pierce. The upper took 87 pounds and the vamp took 101 pounds. So I would say, unless you're dealing with a really jacked rattlesnake, you're probably pretty safe. And speaking of the leather, we also have a leather sole on these boots, and that seems like it's pretty standard across the board for cowboy boots. I don't know why, because they're so slippery. You know, maybe, it, maybe it's a traditional thing where you're, it's easier to slide your foot in and out of the stirrup, um, but it is a full leather outsole. And since we're in the puncture testing mood, we also did a puncture test on this outsole, just to get some more information to start comparing the more boot, the other boots, and it took 245 pounds to pierce through this outsole, which was pretty astonishing because we've done puncture tests on like rubber sole boots, and they, they usually puncture with less than 100 pounds. So pretty impressive. Huh. Love working next to mechanic shops. And while we're looking at the outsole, you can see that there's the lemon wood pegs along the arch of the boot. And this is a pretty traditional cowboy boot thing to do because lemon wood pegs wear down at about the same rate leather wears down. But the real important thing about this is when you're riding a horse and you have your boot in the stirrup, you're in your stirrups, your stirrups sit right there. And if there was a metal nail in there and the leather started wearing down, those little nails would start wearing down your stirrup and start roughing it up and your foot would get caught and it's just not what you want to do with a really expensive saddle. And so that's why a lot of times you'll see lemon wood pegs still in cowboy boots. And the last thing to talk about with this boot is the inside of the boot. And it has a nice foam insole. You know, it's surprisingly thin at the ball of your foot, but it does have a nice little squishy, almost feel like a Dr. Scholl's gel pad at the heel. So that's essentially it from the outside. So now let's cut this thing in half to see how this, this boot really stacks up. So let's get it cut. All right, we got it chopped in half, a couple holes punched out of the side, so let's see what's inside. So there is a lot of leather in this boot, which was pretty surprising to me for 250 bucks. You can see the insole really is veg tan leather. Not only is it just veg tan leather, it's a huge slab of leather. You can see now that even the heel counter is a nice piece of veg tan leather, which is pretty rare. The nice thing about this is it's gonna be really durable, especially compared to like the leather or the fabric counter covers you see in a lot of boots. 
It also has a steel shank. It has a little bit of a cork filling that fills the void between the Goodyear welt and the outsole. I think the majority of the reason this is in there is just to prevent those two leather layers from touching and squeaking. Um, Cause it's not really gonna give you that much comfort with like half a millimeter of, of uh, cork in there. And on this boot, you can really see those nails driven all the way through the insole, through the heel block to hold that whole thing together. And that shows you why you you could benefit from having a little slightly off-centered pigskin on top of that with some hidden compressed cardboard underneath. And that's the thing about this boot is it's not fully leather for 250 bucks. There are some things that are synthetic, like we've got that pad of cardboard underneath. Underneath the shank, you've got another piece of compressed cardboard. The heel stack is not fully leather. It looks like it's some sort of uh, leather co composite or like a, I think they take leather, ground up leather, probably from like splitting leather and sanding it down, put it in a big slurry with some, with a bonding compound to give you uh, something that kind of looks like leather, kind of acts like leather and it looks enough like leather that most people are not going to realize it's not leather, but it's not a leather heel stack. And, it, and the toe counter is one of these pretty cheap, like uh, thermal plastic counters that are really fragile. They break pretty easily. And the heel counter is some sort of recycled material. So it's got a lot of leather on the inside. It's a really solid construction. We can tell for sure that it's a real good, your welted boot. But you also have a few synthetic materials in there. Judging it off of that, they, it seems like it's about the right price point for the quality of materials throughout the construction, which actually is pretty surprising to me because I thought for sure for this big of a brand, they'd be cutting corners and they're just trying to maximize profits while dropping the quality of the boots. It's, it's not bad at all. I was. I thought this was going to be one of these videos where we talk a lot of crap on them and the, the tile was going to be like, Tony Lama should be embarrassed, but really not bad. So if you like this video, support it because like I said earlier, it's the only reason we can do these boots and it's a little bit of a gamble doing cowboy boots because we're doing sneakerhead hype sneakers, World War II boots, and then right in the middle we got cowboy boots. So help this video out, it'd mean a lot to us. And let me know what other cowboy boots you want us to do and what your experience has been in Tony Lama boots. And thank you guys for everything you do and supporting this channel, supporting me and everything that we do. It's so fun to like really dig into these boots that nobody's really judged in a real objective way or at least attempt to be objective. So thank you guys for everything. See ya.